welcome to English for You. I'm Kat. I'm Mike. And we are talking about art today. Art. Yay! Art. Have you ever been to like a really special art exhibition or special art museum that you can think of? Well, sure. You know me. I'm all about the art.、Mm -hmm. uh, no, I like art.、Uh, yeah, I went to the Andy Warhol show. Oh, that where? That was here in Taipei. Oh yeah, it's at、uh, uh, CKS Memorial. At the、Hall. Chiang Kai Shek Memorial Hall. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 cool. It's interesting. It's worth、uh, you know good. Half an hour or so to wander around and、Sounds、look at some、really cool. art. So people love to look at art. It's a great way to just get out and see something new and interesting. And if you're an artist in any way, it might inspire you and give you all sorts of fresh, creative, new ideas. So That's right. You don't have to be a culture vulture to love art. You can just be someone who wants to stimulate your brain and see something new. That's right. Yeah, and you know what better way to celebrate art than with one of the most famous artists in the world? Oh, I thought you were going to have a party. I mean, you could have a party. A party. But、uh, maybe have an art party in this special museum. Okay, what's talk the museum? What's the museum? All right, let's find that in our article. Okay. Reading. Political disagreement may put Da Vinci art exhibition at risk. This year marks 500 years since the death of Italian Renaissance genius Leonardo da Vinci. Museums across Western Europe plan to hold special Da Vinci exhibitions in honor of this anniversary. This includes a show at the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. Which already owns almost one third of Da Vinci's paintings. The Louvre will borrow a number of Da Vinci's works from Italian museums to complete the exhibition's collection. This loan was agreed upon in 2017 under Italy's former government. In return, the Louvre will lend works by Renaissance master Raphael for a similar anniversary exhibition in Rome in 2020. These plans were almost in jeopardy. Last year, a new government was elected in Italy. The country's relationship with France became worse because their leaders had arguments about immigration and border security. These disagreements reached the world of art, particularly regarding Da Vinci's cultural importance to Italy. The government said they were reluctant to let the paintings leave Italy. They were concerned. That the deal would have left Da Vinci's home country out of a major cultural event. However, the Italian government said they will now allow the trade to happen. French culture minister Frank Reister hopes the exhibition will be seen as a celebration of the arts, not a political problem. Okay, so we're starting off today talking about. One of our most celebrated artists in、mm, Western history. Yeah, Who is it? I saw a special show of Andy Warhol. As、mm -hmm. I mentioned, he was alive just you know twenty, thirty, forty years ago. This guy was alive a lot longer ago than that. That's right. And I think it's safe to say he is a more famous artist, but also he's a famous scientist. A famous naturalist and almost like a botanist, right? Mathematician. He, he, mathematician. He drew bodies. He did. He invented things. But he, yeah, he painted a few famous pictures. One of like a a, a girl. I think there's a girl. <laughs> there in was one of a, a lady with、yeah. some smile. Some I don't know. And there was a code. I don't know what. Anyways, the article says this year marks 500 years since the death of Italian Renaissance genius Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci. That's his name.、Yep. Da Vinci, Leonardo da Vinci. Everybody knows him, and yes, he is one of the great masters. Kind of kicked off in some ways, I think. The Renaissance. Now,、mm -hmm. what is the Renaissance or the Renaissance, as some people might pronounce it? Basically, this is a period of new interest or rediscovering interest in ancient Roman and Greek art, literature, philosophy, ideas, and stuff that happened in Europe. 
in the 15th and 16th century. So in the、right. 1400s, the 1500s, we had people like Da Vinci and Michelangelo and those guys, and they suddenly discovered, you know, that these Romans that lived like a thousand years or more before us, they had some amazing things, and it was kind of this rediscovery of science and learning. From the Roman times, breaking away a little bit from the power of the Catholic Church、mm. and the monarchies who were in charge of Europe when they were alive at that time. Renaissance basically means rebirth,、right. so it was a rebirth in the interest and study of Greek and Roman tradition and culture. Yep. And it was a really big thing for art,、big. science, and huge all kinds of things. Huge, huge. Yep.、Mm. So Leonardo da Vinci is considered a genius,、yep. and a genius is somebody who has like a really special ability or skill. Very extremely smart, smarter than most other people, and they just naturally can learn things very, very quickly. And especially, like they might be a genius in particular areas like science, art, or things like that.、Mm. So Da Vinci was, yeah, one of these geniuses, and he's actually who we name the Renaissance man after. If you say somebody's a Renaissance man or a Renaissance woman, it means they're very skilled in a lot of things.、Mm -hmm. And that definitely applies to Leonardo da Vinci, as we mentioned. He's famous. For paintings like the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper,、mm. and things like that, but also famous for inventing, you know, modern modern ideas or things that we only had in the modern world. Things like、right. tanks and different types of、uh, hydraulic and plumbing systems. Also, hot air balloons. Hot air balloons. Helicopters. He came、yeah. up with a sort of a spiral helicopter that. Has amazed people ever since. So Da Vinci is definitely the most sort of important figure, or certainly most well-known figure from the Renaissance. Back to the article. Right. So of course, lots of people want to see his art because、sure. he was a great artist well, as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.、Sure. So museums across Western Europe plan to hold special Da Vinci exhibitions in honor of this anniversary, the anniversary of the 500 years since his death. So in honor of something, this this phrase means like giving honor, giving respect to something or somebody, or give it an important place by doing something to celebrate it. So here, honor is like a noun, but it can also be a verb. You can also say we are honoring Leonardo da Vinci by holding these exhibitions. Or we are going to honor this year, this special year, which is an anniversary. And so we're going right into that as our next vocab word. It is a day that marks something that happened on that same day in a past year. So it could be good or bad. Like for example, you could talk about if you got married five years ago on this day. You could talk about your wedding anniversary.、Hmm. Or for example, July twentieth every year. Um, actually, July twentieth this year particularly、mm -hmm. is the fiftieth anniversary of the first moon landing, the、oh, only、yeah. moon landing. Yeah. That, no, there were others after that. Oh, you say so? There, sure. Okay. There were six landings on the moon. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. All right. I mean, well, first time that men walked on the moon. Let me yes, say that. Yes, the first time. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the first time. Nineteen sixty-nine, July twentieth. Yeah. 50th. Right, right, right. So basically, an anniversary is kind of like a birthday. Yeah, it's like a birthday、yeah. for an event. I'm gonna say that from now on. Tomorrow is the anniversary of my birth. Yeah. And people say your birthday, and I'll say no, the anniversary of my birth. Or you could say the reverse. Then, It's the birthday of my wedding. It's the birthday of my wedding. Ooh, that's like my wedding anniversary. Yeah, I like yeah, that, yeah. that one. Then that one makes even less sense.、Yep. I like it. <laughs> so yeah, we only say anniversary for events, birthday、mm -hmm. for you know birthdays. But、mm -hmm. here's another example. 2019 also marks the 50th anniversary of the Woodstock Music Festival. Rock that's on! Right. That's、yeah. right. That was a great day. I can't forget it. Really? Were you there? No. I didn't think so.、It's、a good movie, though.、Huh. All right, back to the article. It says, so what are they going to do for Leonardo's 500th anniversary of the 500th anniversary of his death? That would be back in what 1519. It says this includes a show at the Louvre Museum in Paris, France, which all which already owns almost one third. Of Da Vinci's paintings, yay、right. Napoleon!、Um, <laughs> so yes, the Louvre Museum. If you've been to Paris, you've probably been to the Louvre. It's the big, famous museum right in the middle of downtown, and that's where we also, of course, find Leonardo's most famous painting, 
the Mona Lisa or right. La Gioconda, as the French would call it. Yeah, or La Gioconda as in, in Italian. Italian. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, yeah, the mm, Louvre Museum. The Louvre, yes. The Louvre, well, you say Louvre because you're very, I guess you speak French, but yeah. I think most people who only speak English mm. will say Louvre. So mm -hmm. the Louvre will borrow a number of Da Vinci's works from Italian museums to complete the exhibition's collection. Interesting. Wow. So they're going to borrow a whole bunch of works from Da Vinci's uh, collection and you know they're gonna basically have a museum full of his works. That's pretty interesting. We're yeah. gonna get into why that's interesting right now. There's some history uh -huh. between these countries especially over art. It's mm -hmm. read on. It says this loan, this loan of some Leonardo paintings from Italy to France for a short time. That's why it's called a loan. This, alo this loan was agreed upon in 2017 under Italy's former government. All right, in Italy, they have elections just like we do. Two years ago when they signed this deal, the government of Italy was one group, one party, but since then, that's changed. Right. You know, so it's sort of like if one party in Taiwan made a deal with China and then another party took over after an election, it was like, wait, 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 we don't like that deal. We want to we want to change things. So mm -hmm. the situation has become basically more complicated since the election they had there in right. Italy. We'll get to get to that in a second. But loan is basically, yes, if I have something and I let you use it for a short period of time, understanding that you will then give it back to me that is a loan right and and for a loan you would usually lend something to somebody right make sure you don't say borrow it to me that's no. that's chinglish no, we want to yeah, say no. lend yeah, yeah. yeah so going on with the article mm -hmm. so they agreed upon this loan so of the works of da vinci italian to italian owned da vinci stuff goes to france mm -hmm. okay in return, the Louvre will lend works by Renaissance master Raphael Ooh. for a similar anniversary exhibition in Rome in 2020. Okay, so it's a loan, but it's also kind of a trade, yeah, right? I yeah. give you something, and that's similar to what you give me, and we're all happy. Or are we? I don't know. Okay, so we're talking about this exhibition in Rome in 2020, and that means that in return for the loan of da Vinci's paintings, the Louvre is going to lend these paintings of Raphael, or these works from Raphael, to an Italian museum. So in return here means like making things equal. Like we said, it's a trade. So somebody does something for you, and you do something for them in return. You might answer a good thing with a good thing, or you might also answer a bad thing with a bad thing. Like if a friend betrays you, you might betray them back, or you might get revenge on them somehow. And we also see this um, other famous painter whose name is Raphael. His real name was Raffaello Sanzio da Urbino, and he's another one of the old masters who lived around the same time as da Vinci, actually during da Vinci's lifetime. And he was known for his beautiful, beautiful paintings. He has a different sort of style where um, he's known for painting beautiful women. And also his most famous works were things like The School of Athens, and he also um, painted The Triumph of Galatea, and he was most famous for painting the chapels in the Vatican, which is the Roman um, Catholic city, which is its own country. So that's what Raphael is famous for, and that's why the Italian Museum is going to get his paintings in return for lending da Vinci's to the Louvre. Okay, so talking about this trade between Italy and France mm -hmm. where, you know, the old Italian government agreed to send da Vinci's paintings to the Louvre in exchange for the Louvre sending Raphael's paintings to Italy, but... What just happened? That's right. Well, back in 2017, when they made these plans, everything seemed set and fine and A-OK. -okay. But then there was an election <gasps> and a new government in Rome and Italy was like, hmm, we're not sure we want to do this plan anymore. So as it says, these plans were almost in jeopardy. Dun, when dun, something dun. is in jeopardy, exactly, that's what happens, or that's the music you hear. When something is in jeopardy, it's in danger, it's at risk. Something bad could happen to it. So your life would be in jeopardy if you decided to ride a motorcycle without wearing a helmet. You're yeah. putting your life in danger. Please or your money that. is in jeopardy when you gamble and bet on games of chance and things like that. So the plans were in jeopardy because the new government in Italy was like, yeah, maybe not. 
Oh, so they kind of went back on their deal, well, didn't they? Well, let's see what happens. I don't know. All right. Well, the article says last year a new government was elected in Italy, mm -hmm. as, we, as we discussed. You know, they had the old one, and then in 2018, there was a new one. Yeah. Okay. But the country's relationship with France became worse because their leaders had arguments about immigration and border security. Oh, Politics, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, they always mess things up. But immigration is one of the big issues in Europe now, and it is causing trouble between these neighboring countries. That's right. You wouldn't think it would extend to art, but apparently it does. Everything's political. Exactly. So if we're talking about immigration, well, what is that? And um, immigration is when people move from one country. Um, to another to live or work or study in the new country. And it's such a big issue with governments because sometimes you have too many people mm -hmm. who want to come and you know, sometimes if they have beliefs that make them want to do violent things, it could be, um, it could be an issue of safety. Like it could be an issue of like, can we house all these people? Are some of them going to, you know, commit crimes against our local citizens? Sometimes it's, you know, sometimes people are just afraid of anybody who's different, but sometimes there are real concerns about can we hold this many people. And so you have this verb w from immigration, which is immigrate. So you immigrate to another country. And the person who does this is called an immigrant. So an example of this might be, in the 19th century, there was a lot of immigration from Europe to North America. That's actually true. There were a lot of people who came from Europe to the North, North America at that time. There you go. So immigrants are people who leave one place to go into another place. So, I guess you know, that would make us immigrants, wouldn't that it? That we would be immigrants yeah. to Taiwan. Yeah. That's right. And we can also use generally the term migrants. Migrants are just people who are moving from A to B. We don't really know why or which place they're leaving. They're just going to set up a new home. This is not a holiday. This is not a business trip. This is going to move your home, the place right. you live, from the country you started in to a new place. And anyone who travels, be it an immigrant, a migrant, or just a person on a holiday, if you're going to another country, at some point you'll have to cross a border. Now, a border is basically a line that divides two countries. And sometimes it might actually be a line you can see, but usually it's not like they painted a line across the ground. It's a fence, it's a wall, it's something like that. There'll be signs that say you are now leaving this country and entering that country. Borders, the ones we normally cross, you might cross them by car if you're driving from one place, but more commonly, especially here in Taiwan, we don't really cross borders until we land at an airport or something like that. But if you think of for example, how China and Mongolia or China and Vietnam are actually connected by land. If you tried to go from one place to another, at some point, the police there would stop you, say you're now leaving China, you're entering this new country, and then you might have to show your passport or some kind of document. So the border is basically the line that marks where one country ends and the other one begins. For example, we will need to show our passports at the border between the US and Canada. Yeah, that's a border that a lot of people will drive across. All right, back to our article. So, Italy and France are maybe not so friendly now. Maybe this agreement to loan art is kind of breaking down. And so the next sentence tells us these disagreements reach the world of art. Oh, yes, no. even art became part of politics. So the disagreements between the two countries even reach the world of art, particularly regarding da Vinci's cultural importance to Italy. Remember, ah. da Vinci was Italian, and the only reason they have a lot of those paintings in the Louvre in France is because Napoleon took over most of Italy back in the late 1700s. Yep. So. Well, he was from Italy, wasn't he? Well, no, he was from Corsica, which well, is part of France. Anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. He was the emperor of they the They stole them. Yeah, they stole the paintings, yeah. which happens a lot, actually. back then. But the government said they were reluctant to let the paintings leave Italy. You might not give them back. Yeah, what if you don't? That's right. Last mm. time we lent you some da Vinci's, Napoleon just kept them. Mm. So reluctant here means not feeling excited about something or feeling like you don't really want to do it. So, like, let's say, you know, it could totally change the tone of a sentence. Like, Leah went to the party. Maybe she had a good time there. Versus, Leah went to the party reluctantly. Oh, 
go to the I don't want to go to the party, but I kind of think that I have to. All my friends are there. I'm gonna be made fun of if I don't go, so I'll go. Okay, fine. You don't really want to, but you do it anyway. All right. Now, of course, the reason that Italy is worried about this is not because they think France will steal the paintings like happened long ago. No, it says they, the Italians, they were concerned that the deal would have left Da Vinci's home country out of a major cultural event. Basically, we're sending all our coolest stuff to France. Who's going to come here? We won't have any Da Vinci's for tourists and other people to look at.、Mm-hmm. So they'll be leaving these people and these things out. They won't be included in this big important. Art exhibit, and that's why we use this word "major." Something that is big and important is major. It's an adjective that we use to talk about major events, major moments, major problems. These are big. These are important. You cannot ignore them. For example, Chinese New Year is a major holiday in Taiwan. Probably the most important holiday. We have all year. That's true, yeah. And if it wasn't, though, the、mm-hmm. opposite would be a minor holiday. Yeah, so, one we like, don't even know about. Or maybe you know, you you say, oh, today is such and such day, but we're still going to work. Like Arbor Day in America. <laughs> yeah. Holiday、right. for trees. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. Anyway. Yes. So, however, the Italian government said they will now allow the trade to happen. Okay.、Oh. Good.、It's、so everything、bad. worked out. They just wanted to you know, cause a little bit of a kerfuffle.、Yeah. Anyways, French Culture Minister Franck Riester hopes the exhibition will be seen as a celebration of the arts, not a political problem. So this、uh-huh. is a member of the French government. He's saying, "Hey, we were arguing. It got a little complicated, but let's just pretend that didn't happen. Let's hope it's a great event." Yeah. So let's celebrate art together. Let's not make it into a politics thing. Yeah, can't so, we all just get along? Yeah, I mean, he hopes that it can be seen as that.、Mm. So if you say something can be seen as, that means you consider it in a particular way. Like instead of seeing it as a political problem, you can see it as an art thing. So you can have a different opinion about it that way. So now that the countries have settled their problems, they want to see it as a celebration, as just a good, happy time for everyone. And that's what a celebration is. It's a party. It's a festival. It's a time when lots of people get together to have a really good time and celebrate, or honor, or pay a special attention to something good. Positive, happy that people just love. Your birthday is a celebration of you for being born. But we can also have New Year's celebrations, Christmas celebrations, all sorts of celebrations. Lots of people. It's a big party. Everyone has fun. That's what it's about. For example, the New Year's celebration at Taipei 101 always features a concert and lots of fireworks. All right, so we were talking about the、um, Minister of Culture, which is a particular position in the French government. This guy is the person who's in charge of the culture department, or you could say there are other kinds of ministers that are in charge of different kinds of things, and these often occur in different kinds of government. I think they happen in the Taiwanese government too. Yeah, sure.、Yeah. Minister of Health in charge of hospitals, and yeah, Minister yeah, of yeah. Defense in charge of the army and spending on new weapons and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But then we talk about. Things getting political, ooh, yes, ooh, political. So that means that it's about things that happen in government or happen in public life. So many political topics are, as you can imagine, kind of sensitive. People might not like to talk about them, or if they do like to talk about them, they like to argue a lot about them.、Mm. So they might, you know, get into a really heated debate. So immigration is a political issue, or things like religion, or housing, or healthcare, making sure that everybody's taken care of. People have different beliefs. Beliefs about this. That's right. Government power, laws, things like that. That is politics. And yes, some things they sometimes they bring politics into things like art. Or this is kind of like you know when they're playing sports. Taiwan's there with the team, and the Chinese team's like, we don't want to see the Taiwan flag. And you're like, oh, they're making the flag political.、Oh, yeah, political. They're bringing politics into an area where it isn't normally involved, like art or sports or、mm-hmm, things like that.、Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's it. Let's keep politics. Takes out a culture and fun stuff because it should just be a celebration. Let the politicians argue about the other stuff. But when we come back, I'm arguing with my own brain.、Oh, when、dear. we come back, we're going to be doing our chat question, and it will all be fun with no politics allowed. Well, we'll see. Hopefully. For you, chat. 
Well, I said our chat question would be great with no politics allowed. Apparently, someone wanted to make it political and、uh, put politics in our chat question. You see, you can't get away from you can't、yeah. get away from politics. Politics is everywhere. Let's look at it though. It says Leonardo da Vinci grew up in Italy, but lived and died in France.、Mm. Ah, which country do you think should display most of his art? And why? That is a really, really tough question.、Yeah. I think that you know it depends on who's better equipped to take care of it.、Mm-hmm. Because if you have both countries that have a stake in it,、mm-hmm. then you know I think it should be about who has the better equipment to take care of the art because it's really,、mm-hmm. really old,、mm-hmm. and you need to make sure that it's preserved well, and you need、yeah. to make sure that you know it doesn't get damaged and that kind of thing. That's right. Now both Italy and France are really. really Really well known for their amazing art, and、mm-hmm. I'm sure they both have experts. So、mm-hmm. you know, maybe they could go halvesies. They could, you know, you can kind of understand why people in Italy might say Da Vinci was Italian. We should have his stuff, but yeah, but then people in France will say, but he lives here. That's true, but also I think from a from a more sort of Practical perspective. It's nice for tourists to be able to go to other places and see Da Vinci. You know, it would just kind、yes. of be inconvenient and troublesome if we had to go to Italy to see Da Vinci. You got to go to America to see Monet or some Fr- or, sorry France to see Monet or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Now with some of these things spread around. Makes it easier, but you can understand why people want to have their country stuff in the country where it was made. You can complicated yeah. question, you guys. Have a chat about that, and we'll see you back here next time with hopefully more great stuff with no politics allowed. Yeah, but you okay? Keep our fingers crossed. Until then, bye bye. Bye. Political disagreement may put Da Vinci art exhibition at risk. This year marks 500 years since the death of Italian Renaissance genius Leonardo da Vinci. Museums across Western Europe plan to hold special da Vinci exhibitions in honor of this anniversary. This includes a show at the Louvre Museum in Paris, France, which already owns almost one third of da Vinci's paintings. The Louvre will borrow a number of Da Vinci's works from Italian museums to complete the exhibition's collection. This loan was agreed upon in 2017 under Italy's former government. In return, the Louvre will lend works by Renaissance master Raphael for a similar anniversary exhibition in Rome in 2020. These plans were almost in jeopardy. Last year, a new government was elected in Italy. The country's relationship with France became worse because their leaders had arguments about immigration and border security. These disagreements reached the world of art, particularly regarding Da Vinci's cultural importance to Italy. The government said they were reluctant to let the paintings leave Italy. They were concerned that the deal would have left Da Vinci's home country out of a major cultural event. However. The Italian government said they will now allow the trade to happen. French culture minister Frank Reister hopes the exhibition will be seen as a celebration of the arts, not a political problem. Vocabulary review. Anniversary. This Saturday. Marks the 20th anniversary of an important event in the country's history. Immigration. Immigration increased last year. Thousands more people came here to live. Border. When Irene drove across the border, everything looked different, and she knew she was in a new country. Major. Heavy rains caused major flooding and damage to this area earlier this year. Celebration. Everyone came together for the celebration of Robert and Fiona's wedding. Political. Mike doesn't pay much attention to political news. He doesn't even know who the president is right now.
以上节目是由活用空中美语制作，活用空中美语杂志，请洽询全国各大书店。如欲索取视听教材，请来电零二二三六四四零零零零二二三六四四零零零，或上网查询，网址是 triple w dot english 四 u dot net triple w dot english 四 u dot net。